Hemingway said that Africa has a way of making time stand still. Sometimes so very still that afterwards you wait to hear it move. And it's true, when our eyes meet those of another wild soul, hours pass between heartbeats. Something is held. We hold it, and then it's gone. That moment, that age, that breath, is why wildlife photographers live. The light's over so quickly though. It's almost depressing watching it rise into the sky. I'm four days into my long journey from north to south of Kruger National Park. It's 350 kilometers, but so far I've only traveled one third of the way. At this time of year, in October, the Shinguetsi River is a dry ribbon of sand in a scorched landscape. There's a real tension between photography and filming for me. Uh, you know, pretty much every moment out here is worthy of a piece of film and getting different shots and angles, telling a little story, just to give a sense of atmosphere. And, and that's not true of photography. Photography is much more targeted. And the difficulty is that if one spends too much time as the sun's rising or setting in this beautiful light, filming, one doesn't get a chance to actually photograph anything. So I've got a beautiful group of Impala on my left, which are totally worthy of filming. But probably not of a photograph that I'd like something a little bit more exciting, something behavioral perhaps. And while one stops to film them, you leave opportunities elsewhere. Quite naturally. And that was just a little quick pan to show you what I was looking at. But normally you'd want a lot more angles. You'd probably move the vehicle. You'd have a tight shot, a wide shot. And uh, just try to capture something of them. And that, that little filming event might take 15, 20 minutes out of the time that you've got as the sun's rising behind you. As Pink Floyd says, you run and you run to catch up with the sun, but it's sinking, or rising in this case, turning around to come up behind you again. It always amazes me how the bush just comes alive once you stop, it's bizarre. I saw some vervet monkeys playing in this riverbed at Red Rocks Crossing. And vervet monkeys are always fun, right? They always do interesting things, so I stopped to take a few pictures of that. And I noticed there was a kudu on the other side in a thick bush munching, a really nice big ram. Uh, but he, he wasn't photogenic in that position. And then I turned my head looked out the left window, and right next to me was what looked like a Sharps Kreisbock, which is probably the only, only the third one I've ever seen in my life. And it was eating uh, some river plants right next to me, but uh, I got some nice shots of him eating flowers, or her, sorry, eating flowers. And then uh, I heard a crack, and I looked across, and sure enough, the kudu bull was coming down the bank into the riverbed, and I missed uh, him being in the best position, but I did get some shots of him crossing the river which I think are quite nice. And all of that happened simply because I stopped to photograph some monkeys instead of driving around aimlessly looking for a shot to present itself. So I think that tells me something. It tells me that finding good spots or finding good moments and waiting 
is, uh, is not necessarily a bad plan, especially when there's a little bit of activity to keep you busy, like monkeys or baboons, or now impala busy crossing the river. And the chances are these impala get spooked by something as they're crossing, and uh, they, they start running and jumping across the sand, uh, which would be really nice to capture. So these things just occur. Good things come to those who wait. Red Rocks is a special place. The old people would call upon their god, Kubayani, master of the universe, offering a prayer at the crossing. Protect us, provide us food in the wilderness, give us happiness, a good road, and sleep. In the 1920s, a character named Texas Bill Lusk found alluvial gold in the potholes swirling in the stream of the flooded Shinguetsi River, where the soft red Clarence sandstone crosses the flow. The place conceals a story told over three billion years. The oldest rock, an ancient granite, lies across the Shinguetsi at the ford, while at Red Rocks, the river cuts through sandstones of the Jurassic, part of a massive desert from the time of the dinosaurs. Above this lies lava, sheets of basalt associated with the breakup of Gondwana land. Now these rocks lie slanted, the oldest in the west and the youngest in the east, and the qualities of each make Kruger rich with life. And the sun is the same in a relative way, but you're older. Shorter of breath, one day closer to death. Rest in peace, Branky. I just spent the last 40 minutes developing a rocking great pain in my neck trying to look up into the air and photograph a hunting African harrier hawk, a gymnogene. And sometimes the way they hunt is to crawl up trees. Now this one was being bombarded by a pair of lilac breasted rollers, one of South Africa's most colorful birds at the same time. So it was all happening. But it was two in the afternoon with tremendous heat haze, so nothing was particularly sharp. But I did get some shots in this bedraggled tree. Initially, I thought the harrier hawk was actually trying to rob the roller's nest, and that's why I thought they were bombing it. But it turned out it was actually some sort of tree frog buried in the fork of this tree. Uh, so it was quite, quite an interesting encounter, and I'm never going to say these are the sharpest and most technically proficient shots in the world. There's literally nothing you can do to make them any sharper, because the heat haze just destroys them when they're at distance. But the behavioural interest for me was really worth it, because I haven't seen that ever before. Now, Shinguetsi is a pretty nice camp, because it's on a river system, which is really good, uh, but it also has roads fanning out in all directions and that really makes it easier to place the sun on your morning or afternoon drive and that's a really important factor. And I want to head southeast along the Penne Outpost Road. When I turn around on that road I'll be close to camp and I won't be rushed and I'll also have the river on my right and the sun on my left, so I'll be getting hopefully some decent light down into the riverbed and the channel and into the trees that line it, the tall trees that line the channel. The tall trees of the riverine forest along the Shinguetsi are some of the most impressive in Kruger. The river's repetitive cycles of flood mean that alluvial soils are deep and filled with nutrients. 
The banks are littered with sycamore fig, leadwood, apple leaf, and nyala trees, and these, in their turn, provide homes and food for the abundant wildlife. The underlying basalt clay soils are fertile, but expand and contract massively in the wet and dry seasons. Tree root structures don't grow easily, and this landscape of dense mopani shrub and open boggy blaze of tall grass and sedges is home to some of Kruger's rarest species. Almost 85% of Kruger's roan antelope live here, so too the secretive sable a comical sesame and diminutive shops Heisbrook. So this dense riverine bush is really good habitat for birds, but the encounters happen so quickly. There's a fire finch down there. Two of them. The encounters happen so quickly that it's it's hard to get a a camera up and um, tell you about it on the GoPro at the same time. Uh, but one thing I'm really really grateful for is the ability to switch into video so quickly with the R5. Uh, it means that when I tell you about seeing a bird. A lot of the time I can actually show you the bird uh, even though my photographer's conscience is fighting with me the whole time saying stop videoing you idiot, take a picture. As the evening draws in, I'm conscious I haven't found that Shinguetsi shot, nor any lions or leopards. It's been hard photography, dogged by drizzle, cloud and unseasonably cold weather. But the plan is to head all the way south. I'm optimistic. I have another 10 days ahead, traveling to the banks of the Crocodile River. And in that time, I'm certain there will be magic at play in front of my lens. Let's see what tomorrow brings. My last day at Shinguetsi. It's swiftly becoming the Kruger trip without sighting of any major cats or predators or scavengers, except for that one cheetah right at the very beginning, which was a great sighting, don't get me wrong, but I haven't seen any lions at all. If cats and dogs have been scarce, it hasn't been true of other game species. The Mopani felt is full of elephants. And where there are elephants, there are always photographs. Just watching these huge animals feels like a suspension of disbelief. How am I here? How are they here? Their smell, their moods, their low, almost unheard language washes over any scene like the dust from their great grey bodies. I love elephants. But it's not just elephants that are here. Baleful buffalo push their way through the Mopani shrubs, the herd always given away by the screech of their attendant oxpeckers. They're a princely kudu, so silent in the shadows that they go unnoticed. And the trees, bountiful with figs and feather-like leaves, green, gold, and graceful in the wind. The sound of the apple leaf tapping, one leaf against another, in the shade of a hot afternoon, feels like the sound 
of contentment. I feel that October is actually a difficult month to come to Kruger. Uh, one of the reasons for that is the park opening times. Because the days are getting longer as we stretch into the early part of summer, uh, and they set the opening times by month, by the end of October, the sun is already well above the horizon by the time we're allowed out of the camps at 5.30 in the morning. By the time we get to the 1st of November, the clock gets reset and you're allowed out much earlier and in half an hour later. And that makes all the difference because in this heat, the animals tend to favor those dusk and dawn time periods. They become almost crepuscular in their activity. wonderful to be able to get closer to this patch of water in the Shinguetsi River. There's so many great photo opportunities down there, but it's just too far away for me. And we've got this interaction between this enormous Nile crocodile and a water bug, which is gingerly munching plants on the water's edge. The temptation to get food and water versus the fear of death. And then the birds are flying up and down this stretch of dark shaded water with their reflections perfectly illuminated in the stillness. All of that would make for stunning photography if only, if only if I could get closer. Shinguetsi has three major routes radiating from the camp and on this morning of my last day I'm heading north along a tributary, the Umfongolo. There's a thin greasy cloud in the southeast and my spirits fade as it creeps across the sky. The river itself is magnificent in its size and emptiness, but with the fading light, the bush falls silent. Bad news. My dad has Parkinson's disease and why I look after him, uh, me and my wife. And Fiona's just called me to say that the deep, vein, uh, the deep brain stimuli device, it's an electrical device that's buried in his chest, his battery has failed on it. And he now needs an emergency operation, which is a bit of a blow. I feel that the doctors should have been monitoring this. Uh, the battery shouldn't just give out. It, it should be replaced before it does, and you schedule the operation. That hasn't happened, but of course it's failed at the beginning of my trip to Kruger. So I'm feeling very bitter, disappointed, angry. But at the same time, how can I leave my dad in trouble and my wife to deal with it? Even so, I, I don't want to sit here when my dad's in danger, perhaps having to go into an operation, you know, in the middle of a pandemic superbugs in the hospital, aged 80 years old with Parkinson's. He might not survive it, in which case I'll have spent days here that I could have spent seeing him for the last time, potentially. Touch wood, that isn't true. So I guess what that means is it's very likely that I'm heading home. The sunlight across the bitter road home had one thing left to offer me. As Michael J. Fox, another Parkinson's survivor said, family is not an important thing, it's everything. And there, playing in the light of the failing day, was family. I finally had my Shinguetsi shot.
He's no bloody use to anyone. He's no bloody use at all.